make a chuku ibezim. We welcome you and say thank you for gracing this great occasion. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Governor, a man of immense character, a man of valor, a man who has taken the bull by the horn, making an understand safe for all of us. Yes, making sure that no one is found in the bushes. If you want to be a member of the it touches his decision. We have no doubt in our minds that no more time and unrested will be what he deserves. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gong is a in his usual character, in his usual humility, is going round, exchanging battles, exchanging greetings with all and sundry gathered out here for the suspicious. Statesman Chief Mazulika Menchi, whom we are paying our tribute today. We pray, Lord, that as we gather here as states, Lord, to honor this statesman, that the good legacies he has made in this nation will follow by the step and take our state and country to the higher grounds. Bless this country in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me also welcome the Lordships and other members of the clergy here present, our local government transition chairman, President General of Town Union especially, their president, a consummate and sagacious and courageous and nationalist, a fearless and laborer in the vineyard of freedom, a treasure truth of Sikhism and Sikhist movement. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a legendary and iconic star of the Sikhist movement. I'm talking about none other than Dara Akumafo, Chief Mbazulike Amechi. May we please, ladies and gentlemen, even begin to applaud him wherever he is. Please let us applaud him and pay respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Charles Chukuma Suludo, truly, truly, the solution is here. First of all, let me apologize for what looks like uh, a breach of protocol, walking in after you have taken your seat. Unfortunately, Anambra State is yet to own an aircraft that uh, the governor could easily have said, look, go to Abuja and bring Ojelibo down. But then, I want to sincerely apologize for that, sir. I also want to thank you for assembling the best and brightest minds of our great state, all members of the state ESCO, members of the State House of Assembly, ably led by Mr. Speaker, our 
and our traditional fathers. As I am speaking to you this morning, Your Excellency, this afternoon and the afternoon, with your kind permission again, I have been mandated by the National Chairman of the Burial Committee, Chief Engineer Emmanuel Iwayo, CFR, to hold brief for him. So I am here holding brief for him as well as chairman of this occasion. I do not know how we will describe Dara Akumago Mbazulike Ameji. All one can say at this moment is to thank God for this great state. Thank God for the people God has given to us in Anambra State. Where do you start from? From the great sick down to every other person you think of. If not for the patriotic gesture of His Excellency, we probably will not be gathered here today. When the chairman was briefing me, Chief Emmanuel Iwayam, he said the governor of Anambra State told him that leave the day of tribute in Anambra. That is Anambra State responsibility. How else can we thank this great son of Anambra? Today, we move around the country with our heads and shoulders very high. I, because you can point to a man who is respected, not only in the country, but across the country, as your governor, as our governor. All we can do is to give him all the support that he needs to take this state to the next level. He has four years. Those four years should be all hands on deck. Back to Dara. One thing that Dara had going for him was presence. Presence. Muke maluma muke tupu itupu. Obata no mama no obata. His loyalty to the great sick of Africa was unequal. The only time he had the pain was when some of them pleaded with sick of Africa to join the NPN. But sick of Africa thought otherwise. He pitched his tent with his old allies, led by Chief Adenero Ogunsoya. Dara felt pain. But after that, they all walked hand in gloves to establish a government of national unity. While you had a women as vice president, you had uh, the speaker, Umezuke. Even the senior president, Joseph Wires, was always speaking Igbo because he was brought up here in Odisha. He was more of an Igbo. So, Dada did so many things to make us proud of him. When it was time, it is there in my tribute. When it was time for Zika of Africa,
to smuggle Nelson Mandela out of South Africa. He successfully did, but then handed him over to Darak Mwafo. Nelson Mandela stayed in his house for about six months. We used to go to Dara to hear the sweet stories of the First Republic. Now the oracle is no more. But we are happy that at least Alhambra is giving him his dues. So the boy is good. The boy has gone. But his legacies must remain with us. We must learn some of those things that made our mother, Dara, a great man that he was. He never lost his evilness. He stood from beginning to the end as a committed and dedicated evil man. May God rest his soul in perfect peace. Thank you very much. I will make a tribute just like a proverbial blind man asked to describe an elephant. And I will entitle the, I entitled it uh, the last of the titans. I heard about late Shivun Bazika Mechi in the late 60s during the Civil War as one of the great sons of Opo, having occupied the position of a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria before the Civil War. I was elated and delighted the first time I met him in the 70s in the company of my uncle, Sir Architect Demos Igwebe and late engineer G.B. and H. They were his peers. I could recall them, a tall, handsome, vibrant man, full of energy and ideas that but was astonished when he was addressed as, the boy is good. He had an aura of an inspirational personality and, always, and I always admired him from a distance at that time. My personal and close encounters with him started in the late 90s when I took up an appointment as lecturer consultant at Nyamdiatwa University and the teaching hospital in Newry. I consequently had opportunities to attend sociocultural events in Mumbai, and that I was always available to grace such events. At each encounter, I gain more information, knowledge, and wisdom. He was always disposed to give a detailed history of the politics of Nigeria's colonial era, pre-independence and post-independence, and the civil war as well. I was always amazed at his memory of the sequence of events, especially dates, details of meetings they had, political manipulations, and the characters involved, the way he recorded the names. It was during such conversation that he told me the story about his nickname, The Boy Is Good, given by his leader and mentor, Right Honorable Dr. Ndam De Azikiwe, for risking his life to save six. It would take a short interaction with him to acknowledge his enviable character and personality. He was a reliable, principled, and trustworthy politician who will remain steadfast to the ideals of his political party. He was an ardent apostle of Zikism and leader of the youth wing of Zikis movement. His pivotal role and political activism were succinctly captured in all the books on the history of Nigeria's independence, especially his last book, The Political History of Modern Nigeria, Words and Thoughts of Mbazdike and Meiji, edited by Gabriel Mwanzi and published in 2019. Apart from his political sagacity, Dara was an astute entrepreneur and industrialist 
He had a big firm, Niger Pop Products Limited, that was popular before and after the war. I could recall in my childhood days, the one that we described far and fair people then, you know, for us, Nedika, Adwezi and Meiji. He was an advocate of rural development, and he did not join his contemporaries to live in Lagos and other big cities after the Civil War. There's no good saying that he contributed immensely to the holistic development of Obo, socioculturally, politically, and, and so forth. Hence, the grand bedrock of Obo, the European Union. There was an ever friendly, had an ever friendly disposition at home. He cracked jokes with the nurses and doctors while in hospital. His hospital bed, I think now the Aspen Teaching Hospital near me. He enjoyed sound health until the last days when he developed some health challenges, not unusual for a mother generation. He was admitted in December 2019, but had a miraculous healing on the eve of his 90th birthday and had to travel to Owere for the celebration and launching of his last book. His death occurred at the fullness of time at the age of 93 years. He was admitted into the ICU of the hospital for a few days, but could not survive the stress of the appropriate surgical intervention he had. As he transited quietly on the 1st of November, early hours of the 1st of November 2022, being the feast of all saints, that's quite um, notable. According to William Shakespeare, when beggars die, there are no comet seed, but heavens themselves blaze for the death of princes. There is no doubt that Dara, the great prince, prince of Ubo, has joined the saints in heaven on the day of the feast of the saint of all saints. Dara Kumafo was a repository of knowledge and encyclopedia of Nigeria's political history. Politician for excellence, veteran Zikist activist and statesman, the first minister of Aviation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, an advocate of rural development, a quiet philanthropist, and the last of the way of querying the forgotten heroes of Nigeria's independence, the book he wrote, and the last of the titans. May God grant your soul eternal rest. Thank you very much.
on behalf of uh, one of us, even claims that if handed over to him, that he will know how to bring peace between evil land and other parts uh, of the country. But that is now history. The boy is good. And I remember when I visited him once. He so took me to his heart. He blessed me and said that I, I have really done good to the state and to the goodness. And today, if I said that I wouldn't stand up to say it, I will not be doing justice to Anamra State and to Ibolis. The first aviation minister is not easy. You know what is happening these days? And never a time was his name mentioned. Anytime you talk or you speak of the boy is good, that I'm after, you must have something good for him. To give him honor, I thank His Excellency, otherwise known as Solution, for making it possible for us to assemble here at this particular time. Ah, I'm really very happy that I'm in your knees because I. I know that uh, for quite some time now, I have been away, but my mind is always with Anambra State. So my brothers and sisters, let us give glory to God for calling such a person. And he was the last of the Zikis. A politician of fame. A person you would always run to for pieces of advice. A person that will always look for, for his sisters and brothers. And if he gave you any advice and you follow it, you will not miss the footstep. You will not miss the advice. So thank you very much for coming here. I, I, I don't have a lot to say, but my prayer is that the Lord Almighty, God, whom we worship, will give him a special space there in heaven and will always make sure that even now that we cannot see him, his soul will always guide, protect, and uh, pay tribute to this colossus giant of a man that has just passed. Dara Akuafo. We've all heard about him. We've read so much about him. His exploits. But it will not compare to meeting him one-on-one -on -one in flesh. He was a man that, borrowing the words of distinguished Senator D.O.P., had presence. He had presence. He cannot come in and you will not notice him. And this presence was not intimidating. It was a presence that was enveloping, that was accommodating, that made you at ease. As old as he was, as big as he was, he was always, you know, he was just there. You, he was like a father. You, a good father, not all fathers, because some people, fathers you can't approach. When they come, you run, the children run away. But this was a father that you want to come near and sit with, sit at his feet, and listen to wisdom that was 
you know, flowing forth from him. I admired him so much that imagine a former or the first minister of aviation here. He lived in the north. He lived in Lagos. He worked in Lagos. He worked in the um, in Belden and everywhere. But when he retired, he came home to his community. And that is what we are lacking now. And I want to use this occasion of his um, day of tribute to ask our fathers not to run away from Alibu. Una was in also because Alibu was see a building every other place, but Alibu. We are making Alibu a deserted place. A deserted place. And there is nobody to look up to. There is nobody to guide anybody. So I use this opportunity to beg in the bag because Can you do Um he lived very well, he left a legacy and uh, like uh, Mama Nabra reminded us, his last request was not uh, accomplished, but he made that request, and that request is leaving. And I know that our governor, even before he made that request, had been on that matter. And I know that our governor will make sure it is achieved. You know what I mean, eh? Uno my name. So one Jesus. To celebrate this gentleman who had just left us. He was a great man. Many of us knew him. In the golden days of Nigerian politics, I say golden days, that is 1950s. That's when Zik and Opara moved this nation. And Eastern region became the fastest growing entity all over the world. We have schools, we have ceramic industries. You have breweries, have newspapers, have asbestos. We have cement, everything. Yes, some build television, but that's a temporary something. And Bazulika Mwichi was one of them. Thank you. Who was organizing these things. And we thank him. Very faithful, very conscientious. Extremely responsible. Zik never agreed to passionate appeal by Awolo and Sadwana that within the constitution we should allow the country or state that wants to secede to do so. Zik never allowed it. These people met, Mbazuke was one of them, to plead with him, he didn't. And so one was in constitution, a little thing constitution, independent constitution, all did not include it. And in 1980, Zeke was still rejoicing that Nigeria remained an entity. And then Bazvika was loyal. Yes. He was loyal to the end. With all no, I can remember this. They were frustrated for a certain tribunal set up against Zik. With a few people, they made sure that Awolowo never slept even one night in the prison in 1962. And yet, that's the man who starved millions and millions of Biafrans to death. 
us a lot. We are not running away. We will survive. And we are surviving. I must confess, I don't know how he discovered me, but he invited me to write a tribute a forward to one of his books, which I did. And when Mokoye died, that's my cousin, he came. And at the end he said, look, your cousin set a path. We're not going back. That's the prayer. I represent Igbo leaders of thought. Professor Ben Mabeze, our chairman, is not here. But I'm the secretary. And as an individual, too. In fact, by tomorrow or so, there will be one page in one of the papers. Acknowledgement of the tribute of the contributions of the gentleman. We mourn him. We mourn him. We've already mentioned that the struggle is still on and we will survive. We wish him good rest. This is of our Lord. We assure him we are here. Continue with the fight. Thank you so much. Thank 
didn't hear from you. But now the Anya, because the only thing I didn't know me, I'm sorry. But now the Anya, the young man has successfully defended himself. And that's one. Then, the last. And that's why. Now, one and the Nancia can make it. Money, chance. No game with Chala, and at the end where Uju was governed. And the greatest mistake came with keeping them 10 miles away from their community. When they have a house arrest, they are manka 10 miles away from Islam. Now, we have missing time to communicate with each other. If I went back out, the man in that room. That I, on behalf of myself, the entire state executive and members of MSND Worldwide and our president bid farewell to one of our illustrious sons, a true nationalist, a patriot, Chief Mbazwika Amej Narakumafo, the last of the long surviving ministers of First Republic. Chief Amej, no doubt, lived a very long life, yet when the news of his death came to us, it was received with shock. A mighty Iroko tree has indeed fallen in Igbo land. And one hopes that the merits of birds that perched on it have not scattered and were not scattered in the forest. No doubt by his demise, a big vacuum has been created in Igbo land, which will be very difficult to fill. Ohanes and Dibu Worldwide has lost a prominent, a very active member of Imobi. Nigeria has indeed lost a true nationalist and a patriot. We in Ohanes and Dibu Anambra State Chapter shall greatly miss him. We shall miss his wise counsel and miss his encouragement. Nigeria shall miss his forthright contributions to nation building. Dara Akumafo. As we share with your family the grief of your loss, we recall our several courtesy visits to your country home, Opo. We remember the happy moments we have shared with you and your words of wisdom during those visits. Indeed, you will be greatly missed. You already missed, but you will never be forgotten because those patriotic legacies and enviable memories you left behind for posterity we speak for you. As morals, we know we will not live forever on earth. Death is therefore a necessary end that will come when it will come. Akumafo, you have answered the final call for your creator. God in his infinite mercy granted you the grace to live to a grand old age a very long life of service to humanity. You have fought a good fight for your country. May the good Lord also grant your gentle soul eternal rest. And then to the members of the family and entire Opo community, we express our heartfelt condolences for the irreparable vacuum created by the demise of this great nationalist and patriot we truly miss him. On this note, let me just simply add my voice to the request which he tagged his last wish, requesting for our son to be released. And to God be the glory that one of our illustrious sons again in the person of uh, Professor Chukuma Suludo has joined his voice in making such a request. Therefore, I, Obichukwe Mekalumudu, the president of Alex Ndibu, will still join my voice to plead that the young man will be released to Mr. Solution because he thinks he has solution to handle it and to bring peace, not only in Anambra State, but to the entire Southeast. Solution, he will be released to you. Thank you and God bless Anambra State. Nigeria's 
Munen, I took on wine. Munen, I didn't know bed at my age. So that is a command for on one level, on one grand. You don't need the caramel. Now I'm going to ask you. I'm going to learn three things from here. I know that I'm going to ask you when I saw. Asian Constituent Assembly, 1988. I'm going to ask you to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask I defeated my opponent and never further constraints. Mwaje constraint assembly in 1988 89. Eke two minutes here. I'm a white, it's also white in a man or any white in OBN at your show every time. Come where go ahead, I can hear you. He really lied. I hear you have a celebration of his death. I remember what I bo. He had out to hear and he went back. My cousin, no, you're not sure about that. No, but I went. No, I get it. He's a man. My position, you know, many, many men. Jide Kiji, I am a no correct, correct, correct. Now phone, he is not joking. He may go there. He may not hear. I forgot my phone. In Kambazulu, that I come out for is the only person no for. Who body in the Bataraka when she was up, when she made that I come out for. No one the shows on and can no one the shows on and can But also that I come out for go on in the matter like that. We're making it go up. He has done no way shows the way she be also that I come out for. So it's something to for us to note. Into them, them question because also in them, I'm as in a boy in half. Oh yeah, Chikoro, Munye. The November Garaga, over on the place. Oh my God, who have got the so much so no more? Now they are the ones. Now they are the ones. Oh my God, they are the ones. So I can remember, Governor of United States, can they do this? Can they do this? No, can they? We can we enjoy the future area. Oponi ne zupana nezu. Pado kwa na gana bato no biocha. Kachineke, no yellow no one at the river, now for Kumafo. Kachineke, no royal Nagabia, Napa on sixteenth. I don't know. Here in Abu, 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 the late chief Mbazleke Amechi, by this important Nigerians gathered here today with a touch of antithesis of sadness and joy. Sadness because Ndiopo, Ndianambra, Ndiwo, Nigerians and the world have lost a great personality. And joy in the sense that the late chief Mbazleke Amechi did humanity proud in all ramifications, evident in the fulfilled life of service he lived. The late chief Mbazuliki Amechi spent a great deal of his life on earth, impacting, defending, and investing in the lives of Nigerians. He knew he had a gift of service, and he did not hold it. But as a grain of wheat, he sold it in the lives of Nigerians in different positive ways. Today, the personality of Chief Mbazuliki Amechi stands as a visual reminder of his legacy and message. His message through his life of service reminds us that there is a lot of work to be done. The work of building this prosperous, confident and self-reliant nation as he prophesied and acted. And no man or woman should rest from their labor until we achieve that which 
our chief, Mazlike Amechi, has initiated. He was a perfect example of hard work and humility, and we should honor him with these virtues. The late Mazlike Amechi's struggle for Nigeria's independence was total that he nearly died in the defense of one Nigeria, a struggle that earned him the name, The Boy Is Good, by the late Dr. Namde Azikiwe. He was a great shareholder in the corporate entity Nigeria, as his passion for a great Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. I thank God that he reaped the fruit of his level, for he lived to see Nigeria's independence and participated through valid contributions in the growth and development of Nigeria and also enjoyed divine grace of longevity as he died at the ripe age of 93. Another celebrated facet of the late Chief Mbazlike Mechi's contributions to public life was his originality, courage, hard work and dedication to duty as a minister. He was a minister with a difference. It is on record that as the first minister of aviation, Chief Amechi was instrumental to the establishment of foremost airports in the country which we all enjoy today. A first Republican, a first Republic parliamentarian, the late Pazlika Mech was elected member of House of Representatives in 1959 on the platform of the defunct National Council of Nigerian Citizens. As nature has its way, as nature has its way, own way of rewarding hard work and goodness, his son, Honorable Barisa Ike Nambazlika Mechi became a member of the Fourth Anambra Sense of Assembly where he distinguished himself by upholding his father's legacy of effective representation. The late Chief Mbazlika Mechi is unarguably one of the most important Nigerians that ever lived, whose documented life and time speak volume of a personality of great repute. At this juncture, may I humbly call on the federal government to immortalize the name of Chief Amechi by naming an important federal institution after him as a mark of honor. I enjoin us to uphold his philosophy of service to God and humanity and emulate his virtues as a selfless politician and good patriot. I console the family of late Mbazliki Amechi of Upo, and in there we saw local government of Anambra State, with the fact that their father lived a fulfilled life of service. Our respected Chief Mbazlike Amechi, I conclude this tribute by saying that your life was a blessing. Your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. Adieu, foremost Nigerian. Adieu, great sickest. Adieu, great father. Adieu, Dara Akumafo. May your soul rest in bosom of our Lord. Thank you.
Today is, at this particular event, is a very special one. We have come to mourn Nigeria's foremost patriot, statesman, one of those who led the foundation of this country, the independence of this country called Nigeria. Anambra mourns today on a day that will celebrate love. For a man who also died and spent much of his life, much of his life, from his student days, he joined the Zikis movement from as a student and spent much of his whole adult life, I would say all his entire life, in the love of Nigeria. For two it was late. Today, the Valentine's Day, we've come to mourn him in his home state, Anambra. I want to suggest that this particular tribute is the national, the international tribute, because Dara Mwafo lived his life in Anambra. He's a believer, a son of the soil. He lived here. He didn't live in Abuja. He didn't live in Lagos. And so the national celebration for him is in his hometown, in his home state, Anambra. And that is what we have come to do here today. One who believes also in his home state, in his homeland, and lived all his life mentoring and helping others to grow. Anambra mourns, but Anambra has also come to celebrate. But let me also say that at times like this, we have to say these things when the person has died. Let me use this opportunity to celebrate several of our leaders here and those not here. Starting with the national chairman of the burial committee, Aheje Jemba. Chief Emmanuel Iwanyam. For him to chair the burial, National Burial Committee sends a clear message about the import of what we are here for. Unfortunately, he couldn't join. He couldn't join us here. I understand he had uh, uh, some challenges. And uh, hopefully he will join us in two days' time. And then also, Bokuzuna uh, Basiba. Eh? Ojeli Bozi, uh, distinguished senator in the OB, who is the chairman of today's occasion, of course. Celebrating one of the finest souls that have passed through this land, through Nigeria, as we celebrate the dead. The day you celebrate the dead is the day you also celebrate yourself, isn't it? But I would also pray that we spend more time celebrating our heroes when they are alive. And I want to celebrate all of you, all of you. You are worth celebrating. I think every day of our lives is worth celebrating. So why we celebrate? And, and um, uh, today is, uh, they said, the Valentine's Day, celebrate love, but we should celebrate life. We've come to celebrate the life and times of Dara Akmafo. Basilica Meiji, a nationalist, a statesman. And I think this too summarizes it all. At a personal level, our paths did not cross much. I first heard of him and learned of him from a lecture, two lectures, two of the lectures that I, in the class, Paul Science 101. I took then Professor Kudiban Nole was the lecturer, but occasionally he would invite some eminent uh, personalities to speak during the lecture. And on one of them, he invited Professor Iken Nanzimiro, who happened to, he was one of the Sikhs, and was one of the six that went to jail. And during some of those classes, that's when I first heard of Mbazuli Gamechi, I must confess. 
and they talked about their doggedness, their determination, their belief in the country to the extent that they were prepared to lay down their lives. They believed in Zik, what Zik stood for, for the independence of Nigeria, for the united Nigeria, in the Pan-Africanist ideology of Zik, in the power of the black man. Zik wrote a book himself, The Renaissance Africa. And they believed in this, but they wanted independence just like yesterday. They were in such a haste that they even <laughs> wanted, if necessary, through a violent means to get it urgently. That's when Zik literally distanced himself from them and they were imprisoned. And I remember um, Kenan Zimiro then with his rapper and his um, arrow gap uh, also, you know, speaking to us. He would then tell that when he came out, he decided that he must be more educated than Zeke. And that's why he went back to the university and acquired two PhDs. And we would shout, Zim. <laughs> that's how I heard about him as legal major. It was in January of 2010 when I was contesting for the office of governor of Anambra. And I went to Obo. Um, I can't remember what I was in company of CID, Honorable CID Madabu, uh, so, and we went to pay a courtesy call. And that was late in the evening by his house, and we spent a few minutes because we had to go. That day I learned that across that area from his house going down, that it was such a tortuous journey, and there was no road, and no access and so on and so forth but it took us quite a while driving to his residence and I never forgot the experience the discussions we had even though you know a political season he would just go you know he will pray and bless you and then the next person will come he will pray and bless him everybody went on a courtesy call that was the last I came into close contact but the few minutes we spent with him some people here have mentioned it. One thing you couldn't take away was that presence. You know, it was so enveloping, uh, his presence and uh, the way he spoke with almost um, fitting authority uh, on, on the matters and, and, you know, admonishing us, you know, to be able to keep and execute our manifestos that we were ruling out before him. All the other times I saw him from afar, I either read his statements and so on. But I always knew that he lived in Anambra, he lived in Oba. And every time he was part of a delegation either to see the president or to go to Abuja, that he traveled from Anambra to Abuja. That sank in me. And I will say a word about it in a second. And so, while we celebrate him and celebrate all our leaders and our number, one of our greatest has again come. One of our greatest gifts to the world. Anambra is the birthplace of giants. Anambra is the birthplace of giants. If you think of the, the blessings, the benefits, the people who have contributed in various ways in shaping the history of this country. Anambra has more than its fair share. But we can speak from now till eternity about the past. But I think one lesson that Dara Mwafo left for us, which we must never miss, that message is that indeed, Umunemunde Anambra, indeed work. The Nigeria, our future is in our past. Our future is in our past. If I reflect back about the lives and times of these people who led us through independence, the founding fathers, and I think. Professor Muchas did mention that about the MI operas and these people of the first generation. These people believed they were patriotic. 
they were nationalists. They valued service above self. They valued service above self. <coughs> M.I. Opera, the premier of the of Eastern region. After Namdi Azikiwa had gone to become president, he became the premier. It bears reminding us that with taxes, taxes paid by peasant farmers, peasant farmers, because there were not much uh, commercial agriculture then, except the farm settlements established by government. Taxes paid by peasant farmers, they used this to build the modern cities of Ornesha with men market, Enugu, Port Harcourt, Calabar, Aba, Umaya, and so on and so forth, with pipe bomb water, with the electricity, with the mails being deposited everywhere, clean streets, with the GRH functioning plant, and people could step out of their homes and take a walk with pedestrian walkways, with taxes paid by peasant farmers. And the Southeast region had the higher, the fastest growing region of any part of the world at the rate of about 9.8% year on year. And guess what? The, that Southeast region, the Eastern region then, is the current nine states put together. Nine states put together. I remember as a kid, pipe bomb water running in my village. I know where pump goes up on one. And you'll see a long queue, pipe bomb water running. 50 something years after, not anymore. To demonstrate the selfless service of these people, Emma Yambara left the shores of this country at the heat of the Civil War. He went on exile. And when he came back, he did not have a hut in his home at Omai. Just think of it. Just imagine in today's world, fast forward to today, when I say that our future is in our past. Our future is in our past. That's part of what these people left for us. Imagine today, governors in these nine states, the entire southeast, Akwaibom, rivers, Bayelsa, Cross River, plus the five southeast eastern states, governors of all of these Finnish office, they didn't have a house in their homes before they started, and living office still with a heart. That it took some concerned businessmen to contribute money to build a house for a Maya Opera where he returned in exile. That's the kind of people, that's the generation that fought for us. That's the generation that served us. One big thing that Darak for left for us, dear friends, is not to mourn and shed tears. It's not to clap and say he lived. We are future, the future of this country, the future of our number, the future of the world lies in going back to those fundamental values that propel them to service above self. That's number one. Number two is that Dalak Mwafo demonstrated that you walk your talk. You walk your talk. You can't be talking about and this is what I see that we share in common. He was a Zikist. I describe myself as a new Zikist. And I will say that, I will say one thing about that in a second. He believed in the homeland. He believed in the homeland. Maka, if you don't say here we are, nobody will say there you are. International community. International community. 
went to Sidele and built my own residence in Enugu in 1997. I said, let the world, it charm, it be Enugu. And that's why when I organized the first Okibo Memorial Lecture, I insisted not Enugu Kage Emiye. I'm going to be in Lagos, I'm going to be in Abuja. A lot of people were asking me, ah, it was a national, it's a kind of uh, complex, complex. It was good, yeah, it's in the bind. Now, Oboro no Oboro, Avengers, Oboro, they're all national, more international. And I said, no. And I brought the Nobel Prize winner, Joe Stiglitz, the former chief economist of the World Bank and senior vice president, and former chief economic advisor to President Clinton. I brought him all the way. He landed in Lagos and flew into Enugu. And I took him round Mamelikin Hill. There are kind of any events outside of Aniwa. He went there in any invitation, especially on a walk there. The rest are sure I will not be there because I cannot leave all of their number whenever. I will not do that. Good luck, you seek it. You must say exactly, you make it in order. It's a lesson that I want for left for us, and we must never miss this important lesson. The third is what has been said several by several people. He made a very passionate call. I say, you go one for your buying. I doubt to go. They are the clear, clear, the clear man. They are the clear, clear, the clear man. I even the number, I even the one. Oh, cool, say, say, rap on one car. Say, rap on one car. One car, one car. Bo, nam de kam. Yes, not all of us agree. But either the purpose, the destination, or even the means. Nigeria. And you like it, you don't like it. You got what I'm in the involved on the Afghan. I'll be on a table, can I get it? A boy. 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 And so his call for the release of Namdekan is appropriate. But I also, when I became governor of Anambra, when I didn't even know who Namdekan was, and he was incarcerated in uh, Akuja, I led a team of other prominent Igbos to go to visit him in Akuja. That was my first time, first, and literally the last until I visited him at the DSS custody. Yeah. We came, we saw him, we came out, addressed an international press conference and called for him to be released from jail from Kujen. Subsequently, weeks to come, that happened. Because he was being held against all court orders and court decisions. Now, when he came out, he wanted to bear me a court seat. And I said, no, it was not necessary, I was abroad. I didn't know it to be attacked or to be anything. I was just doing what I thought was a duty that we had to do. Now, I became governor, and the happy was again, and he is still an incarceration. And then you find his own supporters, uh, those in ESN, those in this, they are in the bush, or whatever. Now, in the Southeast, every criminal, every criminal, every kidnapper is now in liberation struggle. If you catch them, they claim to be, they are now the ones fighting for liberation. I know that he is in pain about that because I discussed that with him. And he, he called it an abomination about evils turning their gun. And let's be very clear in Anambra here, in the everyone that we have caught in criminality, kidnappers, those in the various forests and bushes with arms, 100% of them are Igbos. 100% are Igbos. 
large chunk of them from neighboring states, but a significant uh, number, increasingly also, the Anambra is from Mopo, or was from Mopo. Mopo is a great land. But Mopo got taken over by these hoodlums. Several of the camps, take about three of them, were in Mopo. The day we went on a battle or the war to liberate Mopo, it was about five hour war to dislodge them from their camps. That's not what I think, and that's why we need, um, part of the reason we now need Nam the canoe to be out, so that <laughs> to separate the chaff from the substance, we know who are those who are here, and then the huge criminals. It has now become a huge industry. All kidnappers, all those of them, everybody is now in liberation struggle. The mechanic gave us a gamma and they were in the other. You know. So, and that's I insist that for us to secure, it's not going to be the end all that once you release him, the security will be come hundred percent. No, because several of the criminals, even Allah Nasia, and also where they make kidnapping, not that when they rubber a hundred thousand the colour. Where they may want kidnap uh, at the event, where about one million, I cannot get this yet. You have no, but I was eating the real soul nine and many pressure strong for the same that count numbers. I say nine are three alone independence. I agree one when I'm here. So we want to separate these criminals from the name and agitation, and that's why. I repeat, and we will never rest, and I am confident that Nam the Cameron will be released. Omeronizu, man on man. Omeronizu, man on man. And for those of us who are here, who subscribe to the neo Zikist philosophy, Especially in the aspects that pertain to Pan Africanism. The Pan Africanist ideology. Seeing the black race, the Renaissance Africa, especially the black Africa, and seeing us an integral part of the world. Belief in the United Nigeria, that in future the future of we are better, uh, we are better in a united Africa, in a united Nigeria. Those of us who believe that must not be shy in canvassing this. Indeed, we need the space of everywhere else. Okay, I like with notice. More our chairman, planning and strategy committee, or and Ndibo, worldwide. We did a count and came to the conclusion that then, then when about 11.6 million Ndibo, Nubuausa, Yes, 11.6 million now in the north, over 7 million in Lagos alone, with more than 75% of our non land assets outside the Ebola. Now, you cannot afford with this kind of stake to have a country like Nigeria unravel in a disruptive manner where will be the collateral damage will be most potent from this year back. Because I want we are in everybody's village. We are in everybody's village. And And so in that new Zikist pan Nigeria, pan Africanist movement of which you are sincerely truly believes that that is the future for the mind. But it is a future and that's why we also articulated the process and the framework for the structuring of Nigeria. That the future the future of Nigeria lies in a restructured Nigeria. That remains potent. That remains the way forward.
and I want to believe it's part of those legacies that Dara Kumafo left for us. Let us celebrate, but let us not forget. The greatest tribute we pay to Dara Kumafo, Basilica Major, is that we keep the memory, we keep the flame alight. Let's keep the flame burning. Let's keep the flame of all the legacy that he left. His legacies are not in terms of the mansions or 1,000 story buildings or the trillions that he left behind. His legacies are the ideas, the values that he embodied, the values that he espoused, the values that he has repeated. And I want to believe if we stick to those values that he lived for and died for, Anambra, Ndiwo, Nigeria will continue to win and the black race will finally have the winners in Africa. Thank you very much and God bless you. Odenibo. Odenibo once again has reiterated the call for one night. Now the camera should be released to him and he means it. This more round of applause for him. Of Chief of Basilica Meiji, on behalf of the family, to say how grateful and appreciative we are that we're all gathered here today to pay tribute to this great Mwimbo, Mwafi, Mwanyanambra, and the Nigerian. Mr. Governor, the first uh, appreciation goes to the Governor of Anambra State. On the first day of November, when our dad passed on, I recall that the governor called before 8 a.m. He had just landed on a flight and heard about what happened. He called immediately and uh, expressed his uh, condolences. As a matter of fact, we, we adopted the theme of this funeral, end of an era, because it was the governor that actually said that. So, Mr. Governor, thank you for that caption, end of an era. Thank you very much, sir. And again, Mr. Governor made life very, very easy for us because part of the greatest uh, concerns we had was how to get to a uh, not too remote village, but remote because there were no motorable roads. Then Vijayantiaba, as governor, started the roads, and where she left it, was where Mr. Governor met the road. So you know the number of years that went from when she was governor and when Professor Soludo became governor. In between those years, we were crying. And I recall that Mr. Governor said, the road will be motorable by the time of the funeral. And we had this big debate. You know, the governor is very lettered. And he was very careful with words. So we said, is it motorable that is graded? Is it motorable that cars can pass? Motorable was not defined for us. So we're believing on more travel. But to our greater surprise, the road is now tired completely. Completely. So it cut our travel time to work by more than 45 minutes, believe me, we saw it today. Thank you, sir. So our next time we'll go to who I will call the chief mourner. Ahi Jagan Bandibu, Chief Emmanuel Iwayama. He has taken this on himself. As a matter of fact, sometimes he's been mourning more than us. He's been carrying this more than even the family. So I, my great thanks to him. I can't express the kind of gratitude we feel towards him. I will also have our own brother, who served as the Secretary of the National Planning Committee, Honorable CID Manabum. He has also been working very, very hard. And outside of this, I would I dread it and work under him because he really drives you to work. And of course, as the as the governor of 14 governors or there about in PDP, he knows he knows his onions. Thank you very much, CID. And of course, during the tribute we had in Abuja, just for, for the other Nigerians, because today is the National Day of Tribute in Anambra State here where he comes from. 
but we had to take it nearer Abuja because we had some non Nigerian Nigerians who could visit Abuja, but here was a little bit too far. People like Raji uh, Tanko Yakase. We had the pleasure and privilege of having High Chief Senator Ben Diobi Ojedibu plan, execute, and implement that event. And even hosted out at his own cost. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Javin. This shown us that there is love in Ibo land and we also pay back to people what they did while alive. Well, thank you so much, sir. Tukuma, innocent. If I just saw Navy, they have been part of this uh, planning of this great event today. I will say a great thank you to him. And of course, uh, his co chair, Okwaka Amichi, and Amichi Jafuzo. Thank you very much, sir. I will say the rest. Aeon Josephine Aneni has always been a member of the National Planning Committee, was with us in Abuja, and was always the first person to log into any Zoom call. And sometimes she would log in an hour before I said it would remind her, would remind her that the meeting is coming up in another hour. So all these people have done that. And for the participants today, everybody has delivered a tribute from Professor Igwebe, who has always seen to it that Dara received expert medical care at the University Teaching Hospital in Nnewi. I say thank you very much, Prof. Everyone that has given a tribute. And of course, I remember Tim Nakefe, our BOT chairman. Maybe after here, we will meet him and uh, get more about those activities. We suspect that there may be some of us somewhere, so Tim may be able to tell us. I thank the, of course, Igwe Upa. Igwe Felix Ayumadi, Igwe. I also thank the members of the Anambra State House of Assembly here present, and of course the members of the Executive Council, um, our own Omuskaka Kaka Felix, annual resident of the and my representative in the House of Assembly, John Bosco Adobo Akemobi. Thank you for all your efforts. Because that I will always say, go and call my son John Bosco, he'll get me the message to work out, and you have been doing that. Thank you so much. I thank my colleagues in the Fourth Assembly, led by the Deputy Speaker at the time, Right Honorable Alpha Mobi. Thank you very much. And we see Ucho Bonna and Oko Sisi Matibuli that came to the House of Assembly. Thank you all for being here. I will not stop by permit me, Mr. Governor, to also recognize the best and brightest that Oko has. We are all here today to pay our respects. From Timon Nakife, the BOT chairman, I've already uh, thanked the PG, the middle past PG, and another past PG of football, Chief High Center Maduaku, who came in here. I see next to him, Omenuko, thank you very much. And of course, while this was going on, I learned that a team of very young, bright football, young men flew in from Lagos just to make this event happen today. I recognize. Uh, Uzozi Orapa, Zenko Properties, I see Chika Riza, Emeka Adiba, I'm very grateful to you, God, but thank you very much. Mr. Governor, once again, we return all thanks to you and thanks be to God. Uh, you made this possible today. We appreciate you, and when you call on us, we shall retaliate. Thank you very much. Um, it would have sounded uh, rude on my part to continue to waste your time. Because what I had, my instinct was to say, thank you, thank you, and thank you very much indeed. But there are a few things in it to be mentioned. Um, what did No. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I have some of us don't know, never I know. Is highly commercialized. It costs about five million to rent this place. Um, he has done it for us. Um, it is also in addition to the road and in addition to funding this exercise here today. Please let's give a round of applause. And um, to the chairman of the day. Uh, you've always been who you are. Oh, coach, and I was here with him. Then I'm only listening again. Now, I knew the pains you took to be here. I knew the confusion we had in the committee trying to get an appropriate chairman of the day. 
um, thanks for coming. The CID, I thank you also for representing the National Planning Committee. I had a gentleman with great man. He has done us proud. Please convey our heartfelt gratitude to him and your entire committee. We are really grateful. And I'm very, very grateful. Uh, your Excellency, I have some indefatigable workers here. One of them is your chief of staff. The other one is your deputy chief of staff. I worked closely with them, and you can see the result. They're very wonderful people, most of them. Please, let's put the hands together for the chief of staff. And so, I thank them as we can make family. I've seen families keep their dead ones in the morning for five years. It's not a family dispute. But today, we have a united family, a closely knit family, making things very easy for us. And uh, I remember when I was a small boy, they were asking us to draw a fine man. It was a picture I used. So, and that earned me some good marks.